Ben. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Ben. I'm Jason. I'm um, just going to lose the, the blue gloves. It's it ain't enough. Have hot in Devon today. Let's lose that. All right, okay. So to Ben, what we're going to talk about today, what's going on? So today we are looking at glues. We're looking at a whole range of different glues, where you would use them, what you use them for. They're kind of open time. So a whole bunch of information about glue today. So we're going to look at really in reality, five or six basic glues. Started a bit different. We just glued a paving slab, a piece of cement back together. Um, one of my favourite glues I love and hate it is polyurethane. We'll get to it a bit later. So we glued that slab back together there. That's not wood. It's concrete. Yeah, we can glue that back together. So it's quite an interesting one to do. Just as a put it in, hoping by the end of it, would have sort of sat a little bit. Only probably a bit more time, but it could be interesting. So just going to lose the water. I'll bring that back in a bit later just to explain what we're going to do. So glues. Any of us that do any type of woodwork will need to bond something together to glue it. It might be permanent. It can be temporary. That's a shock, isn't it? A temporary thing. But yes, you might actually glue it and then need to remove it again. So there's lots of different glues on the market. Now, did a bit of research. I've typed some stuff up. Going to read. I don't really think I'm being rude. The reason I want to go through it, I want to make sure I give you all that info. Okay? Well, things on there. And I've been making things out of timber since I was 12 years old. A long time. And there's things on here that I went, oh, didn't know that. So that's quite a shock from my point of view. So quite interesting. So just going to go through here, okay? So one glue will not do everything. Going to need to have a little bit of a mixture. Things you need to consider. How long do you have? What is that? That's the open time. And on today, like it is here, it's very warm. That open time is cut right down. Normally you might have 20 minutes. It could be down to five minutes today. Really quick to go off. So you need to consider things like opening times. You can get different glues which will have an extended open time, give you more time to get it together. So if you're gluing up a large project, you need to consider that. How easy is it to clean up? That could be a part. Now, you've just seen me take those blue gloves off. Why? If I don't, I get that glue on my hands that we've just used, it turns my hands back. Um, there have been certain times when I've had to have a shower the night before coming in and I've glued something up and I've looked at my hands and gone, oh my God, I've got a video tomorrow. <laughs> I have to have a scrub. So it can play a part in it, right? Um, so how easy it is to clean up? Where is the item going that you're going to glue up? Is it internal or external? That plays a part. And actually, even more important than that, if you start looking into what the glues will grip, even if something is labelled external, that doesn't mean it's waterproof. So you need to consider that bit, okay? Temperature when applied and the storage of it. So where do you keep your glue once you've opened it? Okay, that will affect how long it's going to last. If you've got it in direct sunlight on your bench, basically that sun is cooking it. It's evaporating off the moisture that's in that glue if it's pre-mixed, shortening that shelf life for you. So you ideally call dry place frost free. So don't let it freeze. That's a really important part. Okay. So shelf life, most glues have a shelf life once they are opened. They say about a year, but most of the manufacturers are cover themselves. So you've got a year within the time of, so it's worth when you buy a new bottle and you open it. Why not write the date on the bottles? So you've got a guide. If you're unsure if the glue is still going to work, do a test bit. We can spend hours making something and then just want to throw it together with the glue. Why not do a little bit of test beforehand and make sure, make sure that glue is going to work, okay? So that shelf life is quite important, all right? So also the aspect is you keep it sealed once you've opened it. Most of the bottles have something as a maybe a pull-up cap so you can reseal it or something you take off. It's there to try and keep the air out to stop it oxidizing, evaporating and going off. Application. What glue is being used? What can it be used on? All right, now we've had a few things. We've got a few pictures we go through during the afternoon. There's certain things. Teak has lots of resin in it. So it doesn't glue very well with certain glues. Recommended things for teak, you wipe it over with a solvent. Cellulose thinners or, okay, you can scratch the pore surface up. Other things that are playing part in. If you've sanded it really heavily and you go down to something like 2,000 grit, and I've met people that have done this, and then you try and glue it together, the 
hasn't got the pore structure to get into, it won't stick. You've got there's no holes. Okay, so that plays a part. All right, so you might have to key it up, degrease it. Don't sand it too finely. Clamping time. How long does it need to be held in position to clamp it? That will vary on different glues. Some of them can be seconds. Some of them, 24 hours. Months difference, all right? Mixing. Is it a single part? Or is it something you have to mix together? Um, most of the glues we've got near Ben at the moment, they are pre-mixed. So it's one part. But actually, you've still got to mix it. That's a weird way of phrasing it. I've got tub next to me which is a powdered glue in reality it's one part i put the other the water so you take things for granted there are two part glues okay is it toxic is there a vapor um we've got a glue in here that we squeezed the bottle with the other it's like oh wow that stinks <laughs> right so really smelly okay does it give off fumes uh the super glue if you've ever done super glue and you put it on something wet you can get fumes oh i talk about stinger on those yeah. Um, I've done super glue and I put on some of the term work and I've wear my respirator hood so the fumes can't go through the oh I'll talk about my, eye, my eyes water so things like that can play a real part in maybe what you're using okay so lots of criteria on there the major thing for most of us okay is the open time if you build something and it's quite a big project you put your glue on so like I've already said today it's really warm here the water or the moisture in that glue is going to get sucked into the dry material it's going to evaporate or quickly by the time maybe you've got the two balls together the glue's already tacked off there's no surface grip on it so you've got to think about how long it is you can do certain things to improve that life and storage and all that thing's really important okay um i said heat wise so if you go too cold and i have friends in alaska that i went and visited years ago okay did a symposium thing out there they go down to five degrees 41 fahrenheit really cold that glue won't set no matter what you do. So you've got that, that aspect of thinking about the temperature where you're using it, okay? So, glues, what have we got? Most common glue that most of us are ever going to play with is? PVA. Which is what, Ben? Polyvinyl acetate. Right. Very good. I mean, it's a, it's a mouthful, isn't it? I'm sorry, all right? So, it's the most common glue. Now, we've got on here, look, we've got, here we go. Tight bonds, we've got... I don't know, Avivo stick, Osma, right? Lots of type bond. We use lots of type bond here. Now, as Ben's just said, right, most common thing we can brush this on. We can play it with a roller, dowel stick, silly glue stick. This is silly glue stick. I'm not going to touch it because I played with the polyurethane, so I need to let it dry. We've got some other things we're going to look at like that later. Um, dowel, we've done it, we've done. And the other thing, of course, you can play this with your fingers, okay? Or wipe it off so we've all kind of been there it's quite safe to use for most of us as a general rule you can have three to 20 minutes of open time that's quite uh, now we've got different glues here we're going to run for a little bit minimum clamping time for most pvas is an hour it will do wood sheet material leather cloth all right so sheet material we've got mdf that sort of thing great the other glues we're going to look at they'll glue more, a lot more things so Type bond we have standard glue, the original, right? One thing that I got asked a while back was, is there a difference between a yellow colour glue and a white? Oh, don't really know. Now, I did some research. The white has more molecules to help it stick, if you like, a bit stronger as a PVA. But I've, I've never noticed, so the colour can play a part in. You can also get things like dark coloured PVA. What does that do? Darker woods. So you don't get a line. It doesn't appear as much. That can appeal to some of us, okay? Um, Non-drip. So they class this as quick and fix. So two times faster setting. That's less open time, though. So remember, if you're struggling to glue something up, it can be difficult. If you want something that's setting quick, really good one to go with. It's also thicker so it doesn't run, all right? You probably need less. You'll need to spread it out a bit more, all right? So there are different types of PVA, all right? There is also cross-linking PVAs, right, which is classed as two and three. So we've got a type one with a three. So that, I've often wondered where we've got the two and three from. Well, that's where it comes from. Now, most of the two and threes are water-resistant. That does not mean <coughs> submersible. So in reality, what you're talking about is something that maybe is going to go outside a window, a door, or a gate. It'll probably have an exterior varnish or something to help protect it. 
So as much as it will live outside, you're trying to protect it a little bit as well, okay? So that's worth thinking about how waterproof it needs to be, all right? Ooh, I've done that, done there, going to paint it. Can be applied as PVA, as we said, rollers, whatever else, sheet material, leather, cloth. So actually most of us have something as a PVA and you regularly use it. Other nice thing you can do with PVA, you can thin it a bit, 10%. Don't go more. We've said about keep the lids on. So these have a pull on, pull off. That's about keeping the moisture in the bottle. Stop it evaporating, stop it hardening. Over a period of time, the glue will go off, as we've already said. I have a logical thing that I never knew. What do you need to do with the glue, Ben, if you're going to use it? Uh, Anything you want to recommend? What would you do with this if we're going to get this out? And uh, okay. So, um, we've got to do that. Got, got to shake it up. All right. I mean, it, uh, no, I never knew you had to shake it, but actually, quite a simple thing, isn't it? It's going to separate out. And actually, about the bottle we've got here, I don't know if you can see this, possibly on there, moving about. Can you see the colour change up near the top? That's the moisture come up a little bit, separate it out a little bit. If I shake it up and mix it, fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a new bottle we got down from the warehouse. But do you bet it's been sat on the warehouse shelf? It's separated out a little bit. The heavy particles will sink to the bottom. The water's near the top. We need to mix it again. But how many of us just reach for the glue bottle, put it on, and stick it down without shaking it? So maybe when you get to the bottom of the bottle, it's just a bit stronger. Now, Ben, we did a play, we did a play, because we got asked a while back about, can you add a colour to it? Yeah. So yeah. what did you do? So um, we tried a couple of things. So with a PVA, it's got the water base. Um, so I would definitely steer away from things like spirit stains. They're going to separate out and, and potentially um, stop the adhesion working so well. But what we have used is a little bit of um, a kind of iridescent paint. Again, this is a, a water-based paint, um, and that worked quite well. That didn't interfere with the bond or anything and gave us a nice color. Let me just show you. If you were to do something um, that had, you wanted these, these colors to kind of come through, um, you know, or you were, you were making something you wanted to keep all the, the boards looking separate, um, a little flash of that purple running through, um, and it doesn't seem to have affected the bond in any way. Um, we bonded these at about 12 o'clock, so it's now 3 o'clock. They've had three hours to go off, so that's quite a good sort of set that quick. We put a couple of clamps on. Quite amazing how quick it went off. I'm not sure why I'd really want purple glue, but... <laughs> no, right. So it's, it's going to be a more decorative thing. And if you were thinking of gluing joints and things like that, I wouldn't mix um, colours or, or anything. Um, I, if it's a hidden joint, it's obviously no point in doing that anyway. But this is a purely decorative thing. And I'm not sure how much you can see of that, but that's got a bit of the um, kind of red okra, okra um, colouring in it. So it's a, it's a dry pigment, a powder. And that worked, I think, a little bit better than the paint. You can see this one's really thickened up in the, in the tub. Whereas this, um, this one with the purple iridescent paint is still pure liquid. Um, so it could affect the set. It will affect the, t the amount of time it takes to dry. Um, so just be a little bit careful. I think with the, with the powder, it's going to dry a little bit quicker. And you're going to have that longer open time with the, with the paints and things. The powder is obviously dry when we get it. So that's going to absorb the moisture out of the glue quite a bit. Other thing we played around with, could you actually mix your glue and use it for decoration? You've got to let it dry. So you could put some blobs on, build up some purple colored blobs on the surface, something. All right, that sounds a weird thing. I actually know people that do that sort of thing. So you use the glue. Okay. So there are things you can do with PVA. You might not consider it a color. Van Dyke crystals and stuff you could put in. So, Jason, we just wanted to, um, we've got a couple of questions here. Uh oh. And a few hellos to say. So we've got Ward joining us. So hello, Ward and Tommy. Um, we've got Fuller Balani. He's saying it's very hot where they are, hot and muggy there. Um, so well, let's get to the questions. Hi to Pete and Jim B. Um, Fuller. So Fuller's saying um, about seven-eighths of any glue repair job is the kind of clamping and the holding of everything. So it always recommends a dry run um, if you're making big, complex projects. 
Um, I can remember doing a very large piece of furniture at college that had lots of dovetails, mortars and talons, throat talons. <sighs> it's that scenario. Do you have to make it and glue it up in one go? Can you break it down into short stages of glue up? Can be more successful than trying to glue up something, as you've just kind of said, that's complex. Can you glue up a piece and then be able to take off the other side or something? Give yourself. It's amazing. We all spend, and I mean, this desk I made, the top, I dread to think how many hours. 120 hours to make this box that sat on the top with the drawers and everything else in. And then you're trying to glue it up in 20 minutes. And then custom curse when it doesn't end up quite square or anything. So can you break it down to shorter stages? Think about the glue with yourself. You've got fast tech, slow tech. You've got things that actually will give you a bit more open time time to adjust to so yes that's quite an important part or even where you can get maybe the clamps on it where you're getting that pressure type of clamp do that dry run first definitely it's really important part all right mm -hmm. and then uh fred reminded me actually i haven't brought in my um my copy decks <laughs> the one that i always <laughs> use a silicon glue that one which is smelly really fish glue <laughs> yeah so, okay. um, yeah. Which, lead, okay. Okay. <laughs> Which will lead beautifully, right? So we've done PBAs. Okay. We're now going to do something I haven't got here. I've got modern day version of rabbit skin glue, hide glue, um, pearl glue is probably the other staff's pulling funny pictures at me now. Um, when I went to college, we used to do things like hand veneering and everything. So rabbit skin glue, hide glue, right? It basically used to buy it as pearls. A, a tiny color hard pearl, you would put them in a Heat source, so you used to actually have glue pots. You put water in, you'd mix it 50 50, heat it up, and yet it is made out of rabbit skins. All right, Ooh, that, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Okay, so you know, this is good, look. right? Uh, that I uh, see high glue on this page. Just a, uh -oh. a quick one from, from Fuller. Look. Um, he's asking, um, how much dilution is tolerable? So, how much can you dilute the PVA on a PVA? They recommend about 10%. Okay, don't go loads more than 10%. All right, it's all right, Ben. I've got it. All right, I can manage. All right, so don't go more than 10%. But also think about that logical thing that we said cap. If you loop this up and it oxidizes with the air, you've got it somewhere hot, it's heating, it's evaporating the liquid. Now, a water based glue that you can clean up with water, I kind of have a view, probably got to be water based to a degree. You're thinning it with water. So therefore, if you leave the cap off, you're thickening the whole time. You're not doing any good, and it will start to set in the bottle. Whereas if you leave the cap on, it's going to last better, okay? So maximum about 10%, right? So our high glue, as we've already said, rabbit skin glue, quite an important part, right? Modern day thing for high glue, all right? And type one do, let's have a look, is, right? There you go. Now, this actually has quite... So genuine high glue, it's actually, I don't know if I want to do this, but it's a tanny coloured liquid, all right? Pre-mixed, ready to go, okay? Has short open time when you start to use it, all right? Because of what it is. Now, a nice thing with this is you can, so, re-soften it. So that's a weird thing. Now, PVA, yes, I think you can a little bit, maybe with an iron, depends where you put it. You could use this for hand veneering. So you can put your veneer down. You can use a hand iron you can press it, okay? So you can cook it up. If it's not in the right place, heat it back up again. You'll need a cotton cloth and underneath with a moisture, put your iron on, heat it up. You can move it about. So it actually gives you that, that fix. Traditional high glue when we used to use it, even as a restorer, making a chair or something, or gluing it back together where the joints shrunk quite a lot, they would use high glue because actually once it's hardened and it takes about 24 hours, it's, it's hard. And it also fills that gap. And it's shock resistant, so it doesn't break easily. Now, PBA is not too great. It's shock resistant. It can be a bit brittle, so it's not always great. High glue, fantastic. But I will say when you've got a glue pot with little pills in and water, it's a bit smelly, okay? <laughs> Did smell a bit, okay? So we've got our high glue. We've done that. A bit specialised for most people, okay? Next one, one of my favourite glues, polyurethane. So we, we've done our funny brick thing. It's on its way. I'm just having a, ooh, a bit sticky, okay? Pull you thing. I love and hate, okay? Fantastic. This little ball, okay? Um, now, you saw me. It comes with, I will say, I think there's a bit of a warning on the bottle and everything else. It turns your fingers black. It sticks to everything that I know. So 
why the concrete slab when we started? Um, great way of bonding it back together. How did I ever think of? I sold a house about a year ago, actually, and one of the paving slabs on the top of the wall had cracked twice in exactly the same place. So the wall had moved a little bit. Having managed to get the paving slab off, I glued it back together. Ten years later, it is still there, glued back together with polyurethane. It's been through snow, wind, rain, you name it. It's had it, and it's still stuck. So fantastic. My dislike, lots of foam. Okay, so it does bubble up and everything else. Now, I don't know if you can see, this is at the bottom of the pot. Now, the problem with the, the foam thing, okay, is the fact that lots of bubbles, not much structural strength. So, therefore, as much as it gap feels, it has all those little bubbles, which also mean that actually it's not all that strong. It's, it bends, okay, because it's lots of air bubbles. So, can cause a bit of a problem that way but it does stick to most materials so right? um it's as strong as an epoxy so they reckon but you get that problem with so as long as the joint fits together firmly got really good strength right it's fully waterproof all right so compared to the pva oh no definitely uh an outside thing will work really well okay mm -hmm. Uh, bonds porous and non-porous materials and yeah i've stuck a few things to other things that it wasn't meant to stick to okay well i didn't think it would um needs moisture to cure so when we did the slab to effect it's been outside and a bit dry you can use a bit of spray water wipe it over with a damp cloth so let's put the uh, water bottle back there um if I go through it's got gap filling, as we said, but the foam, it's messy to clean up. Cellulose thinners, okay? Can cause more problems or uh, mineral spirits for the guys in the States. When cured, that foam, though, will sand or cut off. You can actually slice it off and then sand through it. It sands really well, okay? Can be brushed on. Um, our silly glue stick we're going to look at a bit later, but this is the one we'd use. I'm just trying to bring it back into right out there, okay? You can see the glue. If I let it dry... I can peel it off. Now, normally with polyurethane, and this is one I peeled off earlier, you can see all the little holes in it, I expect. I don't know if the camera's quite right, but it gives like a honeycomb effect where the silicon bristles wear, which I love the fact that I can do that because normally I have to throw away whatever I've been brushing the glue on with because there's no way you're going to clean it, okay? Um, can be brushed uh, a little bit. goes a long way. Not easy to clean up, right, as we've said. Now, Steph, you've got a picture of the art box I did, look, okay? So let's have a quick look on there, see if we can get that into, all right? Now, the art box that I did is a material called Cocobolo. Now, when I made these and I started trying to glue them up, I tried PVA. I tried epoxy, which we haven't got to yet, all right? So they both failed. PVA didn't even stick it together because it's a very oily and resinous material. So literally, I could peel it apart once I've stuck the two halves. The PVA, nah. Epoxy didn't work either. Wouldn't key in as much as I wanted and was also affected later by the finish, and that caused more problems. Polyurethane, fantastic. But I've got the problem it's quite a delicate shape, and I found I need such a tiny amount of glue inside that when I glued them. I also tried a trick of trying to line the inside where things might, the glue might spread out over the surface where I don't want it. I lined it with masking tape. Did it work? No, it stuck the masking tape to the box. So that's even more stuff to clean up. So you've got to think about it a little bit like that. You can possibly get away with something like a wax, but that's going to affect maybe what you use as the finish later. But the wax would stop it sticking in, like you know, resist it a little bit. But that's one of my loves for polyurethane is that it will stick those unusual materials that I've got and hold them, all right? I also have some of these where I've taken, I've got friends in the States, they've got these up in Colorado and Utah, very dry environments, they're still held together. Whereas other glues, the PVA, over that period of time, it will suck the life out of it. It'll take all the moisture out, the glue becomes brittle. So the polyurethane, fantastic for that. Okay, now, I'm gonna go back one step, nearly. Have we got, got time for a couple- Then we're still on top of it. Got a couple of questions, Come James. On, we yeah, got... that box is beautiful, by the way. Lovely. Okay. Um, so, what have we got here? So, we have got, uh, let's have a quick look through how much dilution. We've been through the dilution. Um, so, this is a question from Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Um, 
Are rubbed joints uh, ever used anymore? So okay. rubbed joints, are they ever used you can anymore? Do a rub joint. You can do a rub joint. There's no problem with doing a rub joint. Um, the major thing with a rub joint is the surfaces need to be flat, straight, and they go, go together, okay? Most people still clamps with, what? Well, it's, it's weird. I can remember doing rub joints, definitely. But we got into a oh, biscuit jointer. All those little things. Well, it's actually traditional old-fashioned rub joint. Fantastic. And I've seen things that you go, that's all they did. Go, you know, rub it together, clean the air out. You get a real thin layer of glue. And if you don't know what a rub joint is, Google it. Okay, wait till we finish, though. Okay. <laughs> so, go rub it together. It pushes the air out. Okay. That helps pull the tack in, pulls the materials together. Okay. Join us some material is obviously quite an important part as well. If you think about any of your glues, if the wood's not wet, it's going to, or if the wood has got some moisture in it, it's going to shrink back when it dries. That can affect the glue joints. So you need to make sure the material's dry. Mm -hmm. um, and then just a few statements, really. So uh, hi, Malcolm. He's saying that um, he used a five-minute PVA to glue up an open section segment, uh, segmented turning. Uh, segmented turning. So lots, lots of the guys on know they're using the tight bond. Quick and thick, all right? Because if you've got segmented work, you can put a small amount of glue on each of the blocks. You can rub them together or locate them. It doesn't drip as much. It's got quick tack time, which is great for what they want. If you've got good surface area contact, the rub joint idea will also come into that because you can rub it in, leave it. You don't always need a clamp on it, which is great. All right? Yeah, and then we've got some um, some top tips from Fuller. Um, when using poly polyurethane using a use a damp cloth which we've used a bit of water on there um and then um where are we so pete's saying a cheap um silicon pastry brush is usually uh, great for gluing um and we then get to all those we've got a load of those <laughs> yeah. at the end so that's the plan uh, so and then a question here from keith is there a glue which is flexible he's saying he's made a clock with a metal chapter ring which was glued on Unfortunately, as the metal and wood expand at different rates, um, the chapter ring buckled. Um, any ideas? Okay, now, from what you just said, I don't think it's the metal ring that's probably expanded. The chances are the timber's probably shrunk across the ground. All right? So that will cause a problem there because obviously the timber's moving. If I was going to look at doing that, maybe part turn it, leave it six months so the wood dries out a little bit more, put it back and finish it off. Best thing you go with polyurethane or an epoxy because they will both get that wood and the metal, okay? Um, but that dryness is an important part. The minute it starts to shrink across the grain, yes, it's going to force that metal ring to a shape. I used to have similar problems years ago. Uh, I used to make lots of hand mirrors and glue the mirror in. Um, I started now using hot melt glue. That seems to work. It's got a little bit of give and a little bit of flex. That's the last gear we're going to look at. So that could possibly be an answer as well. It's not so rigid. So hot melt glue gun could be good. But I've got over the problems I have with the timber melting or the moving and cracking the mirrors. There's nothing more annoying again. You know, you've made it, it, it moves, it'll crack it. So we're going to go back one step because I forgot one glue. And we haven't forgotten the glue as such. Most of you have something like a stool or a chair or a piece of furniture that's got a wonky joint. When I worked before I came here, I made one-off bits of furniture for a guy. We... Did occasional restoration jobs. We never did chairs, ever. Keith would never allow us to do a chair. Why? Well, I've got this one joint that's gone here, down on there. Can you re-glue it for me? You ever try taking a whole chair apart? Because that's what happens. Can't just do one joint. You've got to try and get into this one to get that rail out. And by the time we finished, you end up with it all apart. So what seemed like a simple five-minute job turns into hours. So... Veritas make this stuff. All right, I'm just going to get this out of the thing a minute. Now, they do a, I think you can probably see it, chair Dr. Glue. All right, so you get a little tub of a PVA-based glue. But it's actually, I was quite intrigued by this, it's thinner. So it penetrates very Now, on an old piece of furniture, the timber will have dried out. It will have shrunk a bit. The idea with this is by being thinner, it gets pulled into those fibers of the wood. It causes the timber to expand. Something within that glue then also replaces that area that it's filled with and stops the wood shrinking back down again. So it stops it shrinking in size. It also obviously bonds. So therefore, it's sticking the joint back together again. Very clever. But how? Okay. How about you can put your glue. I've got to be careful. I don't want to drop them all. 
You can put it in a syringe. Okay. You drill a hole, one mil, wherever, in the side, in, pump your glue in. Very clever. So you can go with a small drill bit and inject the glue into that surface. Um, now, I know it being a Veritas product, and I've been here 20 years, and we've always sold that as a product. If it's still around after 20 years, it must work. Okay? So, I've got one at home, and yes, I've used it. So, I find it fantastic because it gets into those places where I don't want to take something apart, get into it. Or that frustration of, when we've got one joint, there can be a way of injecting glue into the joint without taking it apart. Good way of doing it. Right, I can lose the stool. Okay. So we've done polyurethane. Epoxy band. Now, this game, you, you've used epoxy. What do you use epoxy for? I use epoxy all the time. I, I really like epoxy for, um, for pen turning. So gluing the barrels or uh, project kits, um, gluing the barrels inside the blanks uh, as part of the prep. Um, and I really like that one because... Um, when you're turning, you're introducing a lot of vibration into whatever it is that you're turning, just through, you know, it turning around, the chisel um, cutting on it. Um, so it has a, a little bit of uh, shock absorbency, a bit like the polyurethane. It's got a little bit of give, um, and it stops it from, from shattering or... or um, Not affected by the heat when you're turning? No, no, it's just uh, it's really, okay. really good stuff. It's a really good thing to go with. Now, this is different to... And we're using epoxy as a glue. Epoxy is very fashionable at the moment of making a table or some different type of stuff. It's still a glue, but this is done as a glue. All right. Um, now, epoxy has a few things. So back to my magic part list. All right. Um, it has no shrinkage. So most glues, PVA over a period of time will shrink back more. Polyurethane? No. Epoxy doesn't shrink. Okay. Can be used on most surfaces. Porous, you've got to make sure it's clean, degreased. So you can glue metal with it to wood. I used to glue tools into tool handles years ago. So I would wipe over with thinners again. You can have set time from something like a minute to an hour. We do a five, we do a 30. That's a tack time, if you like, to hold it. Fully hardened might be 24 hours, might be longer. That's something you need to look at carefully because that tack time can be a place, you know, major thing. Temperature. It's affected by heat to a degree when you're mixing it and everything else. Ideally, you want to try and keep it cool. Um, if you have, and most people will know of this stuff around the world, different people, you get your two bottles. We have a resin and a hardener. You need to mix equal parts. That's important. You need to mix it up properly. That's important. So you don't mix it a little bit. You need to make sure you go. Now, occasionally, if you've had your bottle open and you've left it on the shelf somewhere for six months to a year, the resin, am I right? Yep, yeah, all right. In the back bottle, will go to a white crystallized state. And you kind of go, it's gone off. Hmm. Get yourself a cup of hot water. So you boil the kettle, you can have a cup of tea at the same time. Submerge it in there, just stand it in there. Or turn it back to a resin for you, okay? So that's really useful to know. But let it cool down before you go and use it. Because by heating it, you actually shorten your open time of gluing the project together. And yes, I've been there, right? And it was quite something important. I was trying to go up at the time, pulled the proxy in. It's 30 minutes. It went off within five minutes because I've got it warm. All right. So it has a heat reaction. Likewise, if you leave lots in the pots. So we've got a Z epoxy five minute weather. You also get West Systems glue, which is a boat building thing. Same sort of stuff. You leave lots in a pot. You can have a little volcano and it gets very hot. Don't over mix the amount you want. Try and have enough for the job. Other thing I've used the epoxy for, which Steph's got the picture lined up on here, I use it as an infill or a filler to add to a decorative item. So box lids on those boxes have the rings all cut on the lathe, on centre and off centre. I can use a black or red inlay. So I've used actually African blackwood dust or Purdue dust. Mix with the epoxy, fill it, clean it up, sand it up. Looks fantastic. And I love the fact I can say to people they're inlaid with African blackwood or Purdue. I don't actually mention the word epoxy too much at the time because that sounds, it uh, makes me sound clever if I can cut those rings like that. Okay, so there are ways of cheating, but I couldn't do it without an epoxy. Makes it quick and easy to do. All right, so a really useful glue. Just go back in the list, just make sure. So other things for epoxy has good for laminates. 
Yeah, we're gluing up a laminate. Um, we've got something on here next year and get that back to you. So a laminate we did for... All right. Back of a chair. So we glued these together. This was the bit off the end, so you can see the little steps where I glued it up. So they were all in ash. We cut those. Okay. So it can be good for them. All right. Uh, where are we there? So we've said about boat building. So if it's used for boat building and the aircraft industry, okay, it's waterproof. Right, it can smell a little bit. Right, we've said about the heat. It has good gap filling properties. So things like Ben kind of said, where well, it depends. If you get a little bit of wobble on a drill, you can actually fill that. It will work. It's non-brittle, so it doesn't shatter, and it sounds all right. Hence the fact of my box lids. I know I can get away with it. So your epoxy is quite an important part. Um, I wouldn't use it for a large one up. Um, I can remember now. I went to. I applied for a job when I was about 17 at a place called John Makes School for Furniture in local to here. I didn't get the place. That's what probably, you know, all right. So, but at that point, they were real pioneers of using epoxy resin to glue up and make some of the laminates they were doing for their chairs and stuff, or how they're gluing stuff even together, inserting a metal pin to glue the two bits of wood together. That was quite pioneering. Silver Learning Workshop, if you've looked at their website, they do metal structured furniture so aluminium legs and table frame but then veneer onto it to make it look like wood so you can have something that's stronger as a, a carcass frame because it's metal with the decoration of a timber on the top wow again using an epoxy so there are uses for right um gonna go another glue then right so resin glue okay now we know resin glue as uh, and clear a few things cascamite okay I've known it as a few names over the years. Cascamite, Extramite. Okay, this is a powdered glue. So this humility is a two-part glue. Developed back in the 1930s. Okay, so you need to mix it. It should look a bit like a PVA glue when you've mixed it. Nice, smooth, and clean. All right, no lumps. So it needs to be, all right, not too thin about the consistency of a PVA. Again, affected by heat. You try, and I can remember doing jobs where, you know, trying to glue stuff together, and it's a hot, sunny day. It goes off rapidly, and it goes off in the pot quite quick. So once it's gone, forget it. Once it starts to go to jelly, it's not going to hold anything. Really good shock absorbent tent with us, all right? So boat builders and the aircraft industry since 1930s have used cascamite, which is something to really say. Now, it's a formaldehyde type glue, so in the States it will have a different name, but it's a powder wood glue. Really useful, great for things like the laminates. So this would have been done. We would have glued this up with an epox, uh, with the cascamite, all right, the powder. Really good to glue up with. Quite nice to do. It's water-based, so it's easy to clean up. Good shock resistance, but has a bit of flex, okay? Um, ooh, can be used for veneering. So if you've ever wanted to veneer a large piece of furniture, you'd actually have a Pacific glue roller with a foam backing, and you put your glue in the top, having mixed it, I'm down, put your veneer down with the tape, then you can put it in a hot press machine, so you can speed this up. You can get a 8 by 4 sheet in and out, I can, we're a spoiler at college, okay, less than 4 or 5 minutes from start to finish. By hand, a day. 4 or 5 minutes, wow, same with a laminate. So, really useful as a glue. Most of us, that, that's going to be on what we've got, but you might do a laminated back chair rail, that looks quite nice. We're going to do, we've been talking about that today. Maybe we can do a laminated thing as a project. So that's quite a nice idea. All right. Um, as we've said, a favorite with boat builders and aviation, it's water resistant totally. Okay. So if it's, you know, that sort of thing, really useful. Okay. Mixed by weight or volume. So you need to go careful when it is. Once it starts to cure, forget it. So you've got to bend it. Um, wood based products, you can apply with brush, roller, cleans up with warm water. Going for it. It's, it's a good glue. It seems to be. And the nice thing is, with it being a powder, it's quite easy to store. Keep the lid on. Again, it has a bit of a shelf life, so you need to look after it. Don't go buying big, massive tubs if you're only going to use a little bit. Okay? So, Ben, you got any others at the moment? You want the glues? I've got, no, I've got any other glues now. I've got to turn around now. Oh, question. So, all right. Oh, yeah. So, we have got a question. Right. Um, so, some great tips coming through from Fuller here on um, on gluing. Thank you very much. Um, Fuller's asking: Is cascamite is cascamite rated for structural use? 
Yeah, because uh, industrial wooden beams and things, I don't know if you've seen them, the laminated wooden beams that they have, they're powdered good. So they are a structured engineered beam, so great for that. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, definitely you could use it for that. I don't know what you're thinking of using it for, but okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm just grabbing other glues we've got. So we've done those. Now we're down to super glues. Love playing with super glue. It's a fantastic thing. Um, you can get different set times. So we have something like seconds, two or three seconds on set materials, right up to, you know, stuff's just trying to play with it. Moving, uh, just moving bits out, all right. Different things I've got on here, all right. So you get a thin one. This is like consistency of water. So therefore, we can put it into different materials. I had blocks. Where did I leave them? There. Behind me. They have to be somewhere. <laughs> so this has got... Should I line? bring it up? You can see that crack that I can make up here. So with something like a thin super glue, that's the medium. Okay. So you can get different consistencies. Thin one has the consistency of water. Get a little bit careful with it because you, I've had stuff where I put it on and it will run through and out the other side. But that will run down into that crack without me having to physically take it apart and re-glue it. So it can be really good for that. Just as something you can put in. Now, lots of the guys I know also use super glue as a finish. I've never tried using CA glue as a finish as yet. Okay? But love the fact I can pour it in. Different consistencies will obviously give you more open time, shorter open time. Storage needs to be kept cool. Okay. Um, I have a friend that occasionally goes stay with in Australia who I was quite excited when I walked into his lounge and there's a little Stella Artois fridge in the lounge. I'm like, okay, it's full of super glue. <laughs> All right. This is where he keeps his super glue because he has it for a shop and he keeps his glue. So, thin one has consistency of water. I'll play with that again. Medium one, thicker. I don't know if you can see, I'll bring it in a bit. This one I can throw about a bit, okay? Now, has a shelf life. This bottle here, look at that. You can see it. It's set. No matter what I do, you can see that bubble at the bottom. Not moving about. There's a, all right? So it does have consistency. It will go off and go hard. Now, those are both medium. One's almost like a jelly. And you can get a gel, all right? So you get thin, thicker. Go careful with the lids. You need to try and make sure you keep this area clean and also inside the cap so it locks on and again cuts the air out because the moisture in there sets us off go careful if you're unscrewing the black cap make sure you undo the black cap and not this one because there's nothing worse than actually thinking you've undone the black cap just to relieve the the fountain nozzle if you like which is this bit and you go to pour it and suddenly realize you've got the whole bottle out and you pour it over. Okay, I have done that. I, had, I was holding something, trying to grip it and glue it. And then, <sighs> all right, so can be problematic. You can get an activator, a kicker. So that will actually set this off. Thin one. Now, uh, any of you play with this will know that if you put the activator on, can cause a few things. And we've got different activators that we could have. First of all, we'll turn it a bit more yellow. It will also make it go a bit white on the surface, okay? It will also, if you get it on your skin, as in the glue and the activator definitely goes off quicker, it burns, okay? So it can get a bit hot. Likewise, you get lots of super glue on your finger, it can burn. But this has created quite a hard white surface on the top here. If you're trying to fill a crack, can you leave it just to settle in? Walk away from it for a few minutes, let it dry naturally. But if you spray it, it's going to show more and you've got a bit more cleaning up if you're gluing something together okay we can which we go with thin medium this is the one i think we can get it out of okay so i'm just getting some medium glue this is some corian which is a plastic i've got a blob on there bear with me we could do activator on the other bit Push the two together, okay? How about that? Done, set, gone off. All right, by using the two really quick. And Corian's quite a quick one to go off nicely with, all right? But, so again, you can use it on pancakes, but my dislike with using this on pancakes is there's nothing worse than getting the brass tube halfway in the glue sets. Mm. All right, so you need to make sure you get that. So 
to me, if you said you're going to use pens and you want a glue, the epoxy or the polyurethane are a better bet. Other things some of you might have, and you might have tried turning. Then you would have done coffee bean pen. Coffee beans, yeah. Coffee bean pen. Now, to harden the coffee bean pen can be worth putting super glue. All right onto the blank when you start turning it okay let the glue sink in it will harden it all right so it'll harden those coffee beans because they're soft so you get a few people say i bought a coffee bean pen i can't turn it, it just shatters harden it with some super glue can be really good likewise let's just have a look where i am this is a piece of spalted beach very dry stuff make sure i got my thin one again This we can use, sorry, Steph, I've, I've got to lean out over the bench look, as a wood hardener. Now, get this. I can pour this on. This just drinks it, okay? Now, I don't know if you can see. All right, we get smoke off of this in here. I'm trying to keep my face away because you will get fumes off of this, okay? But this can be used as a wood hardener, okay? Now, I'm really flooding it, putting it in. Um, getting a bit of bubbling off this, and we definitely get some smoke. We get the fumes. Now, try and keep your eyes away from the fumes, okay? Um, this is one of the things I know people kind of say to me, but I'll get lots of, yeah, you will, all right? It's um, from memory, and if I've been told right over the years, this is cyanide based. Super glue was originally invented, I know, for Vietnam. So it's a way of patching the guys back together and glue them up. It is they, it's medical super glue, it's slightly different, okay? But there are occasions when I will use super glue just to try and repair my fingertip or something, but I've sounded it or worse thing. All right. Okay. What happens if you get it stuck under something you don't want or even your hands? And a few of you now will have been, okay, fingertips. There is, okay, back in uh, right there, a debonder. Okay. As a gel, it takes four or five minutes to fully work. So you've got to be patient, but yes, it will work and debond the super glue. So if you get that sort of scenario or using lots of it, maybe keep a bottle in the fridge. Okay. Right then. Okay. Ben, so got question a few questions that I knew here, Jason. Do that. Look, okay. Come um, on, we got. So um, some great, again, great um, uh, points per, per, across from Fuller. But um, Malcolm's asking, what is the best glue for hand veneering? How big a surface have you got to do? What you're trying to do now? To me, I'd probably go with cascomite as long as I've got some way of pressing it. The hide glue that we said about you can put down and use an electric iron. Make sure you get an old one. Don't don't go steal the one out the house. All right. And if you do, I didn't tell you. Okay. Um, damp cotton cloth just to stop you cooking that, but but that will be good as well. You can hand soften. Okay. Depends how much you've got to do, okay? Traditionally, I would use pearl glue. That's made, You can use a PVA, but you need some way of holding it and pressing it. You can use PVA, actually. It's quite interesting. We watched Sean when we did Maker Central, and he used a PVA glue and used his veneer. He used a roller, put the glue down, pushed the veneer down as well with a clean roller, and then he actually wrapped it with cling wrap on a small surface and then pressed it. That was quite interesting. So modern day things coming into it. A plastic sheet, maybe on a press board to stop it sticking to the plastic sheet. Fantastic. When we did the polyurethane, I put a plastic sheet on the bench because it won't stick to that if anything runs out. So it can be worth thinking along those lines. Have a play. Depends how big a surface you want to do, how serious you want to get into veneering. Okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so we've got um, uh, Robert's asking, why does he get a dark line with PVA glues? Depends on the glue and what you're, you're doing. Again, you get different colours. The white tends to dry clear. The yellow can be a little bit yellowy. You can get a dark one. Some of it can also be gap, okay, between where you're in. When you start sanding, and if you're putting the dust into that gap, it shows up more as a line. So it can be worth playing around with different glues, okay? Just have a little bit of an experiment. I know it's, it's spending money on which glue is going to, okay? Read what they are. Some of them will be clear, some will be white. Obviously, if you've got dark wood, a dark wood glue would be better, okay? So it can play a part in it, all right? And yes, it can be difficult. Even with super glues at times, I cast and curse, I get a glue line, and it seems to show. So it can be that thing. Yeah, all right. I think that's about it. There's other great suggestions here, so you okay. folks have a look so, at the comments. Last glue. We're not doing anything with it. Hot glue gum. Okay. Now, again, it's one of those weird and wonderful things where people say, what you glue with? I want to temporary glue something, even to hold something on a lathe occasionally, or fix it on place to make a jig. 
Hot glue gun can be fantastic. It's quick, easy, cost effective. Heat up, put a line. No, nah, not in the right place. You can take it off. Fantastic to do, right? There are days when I kind of, where have I put my glue gun? It's, it's a good way of doing stuff. Even though I say, mount things on the leg, and people go, you can't put on the leg. Yeah, you can. It's got shock resistance. It's got high impact strength. We're looking at the different glues or different glue sticks that will give you different qualities of, okay? So they all play a part in. Um, being sort of, I think, time, obviously it gets hot. You've got to keep your fingers out of the way. We've all done that thing. Oh, well, that's a, a pain. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely worth having glue gun, all right? Even like I said, the jig building, it gives you a quick and easy way of putting things together, all right? So glue gun could be a good one, all right? Last few things, and I can't remember where to put them in now. Where do I hide them all? Ben's got them all behind mm -hmm. him, and they bring, bring your roller kit, Ben. How you put your glue on can be another part of, okay? We've said about silly glue stick. And I've got one there, there. We've got another glue stick. You've got the spreader there. Got the spin ones. ones. Okay, I've got that. That's what I was after. This has got a PVA on it. Okay, we've used this. This is the head of a silicon, a silicon glue brush. Or I class it. So we know them as a silly glue brush, right? But these are silicon bristled. This has got PVA on it. I can't move them. But actually, I love the fact that why well, just put my hands? So if you're one of these people that forget to clean it, you can actually pull this out. All right. Wow. So your brush is back to new again. Okay. <laughs> so fantastic to do. And I didn't believe I'd get away with a polyurethane, but there it is. Okay. So polyurethane, you can do it as well. Well, so silly glue brushes may be a good way of going. So you get things we can have a try. Brushes, scrapers, which allows you to get into the corner of your joints and clean up. Soft bristles, nice to do. There's glue spreader that Ben's got behind here. I'm going to grab it, look. Which has got bristle tips, so you can work down through here. And again, the whole thing's silicon, so the glue won't stick. Even the tray on here is silicon. So if you leave the glue in it, you can peel it off when it's dry. I love doing that. It's really satisfying. Oh, okay, yeah. so, so it's a really good way. You can get... Dow glue sticks. I wish we'd had these when we did the window chair, of course, <laughs> yeah. you know. Instead of trying to sharpen up, it's a dowel to fit inside the hole, or which finger size was it? In. Okay, so we go into the hole. You've got scraper tip on the other end, so you can spread it nicely. Again, silicon based. A really good nothing sticks. Glue rollers. Okay. Love this because if you're seriously getting into gluing up, the nice thing with this is, first of all, everything on this is interchangeable. You have a bottle. You can seal the bottle, if you like. You've got your glue in it, so it doesn't oxidise, okay? You can have a brush or tips that go on. So this has got different tips that we've got, different shapes, all right? will fit into different areas. So the round ones fit into, as we kind of said, chair leg or something. We'll take this out. We could wash that one if you've got your glue on it. Uh, biscuit joint type one. We've got a flat slot. Okay. So that will go into your joint. Again, when you finish using you can seal it so you don't have to wash it up if you're using it again. You can band it down. We have proper biscuit joint. So there's a whole range of different nozzles on there. Now, it's one of those things where I've looked at a few years ago and kind of, I don't know. I never really have one out. I've looked it in the book and kind of, I wonder if it's worth having. But having got one down to have a look at it, I'm going, oh, wow. Because you can move it about. You could have your glue and thing. You can wash this. You've got a glue roller. How easy do you want it? And you can leave the glue in a little bottle so you haven't got to have it out. Um, trying to, do you know how, 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 it's tricky to decant a little bit out of this big bottle. Uh, I've all had that scenario where you get a big bottle of glue and you're trying to pour just a little bit out. Maybe you siphon it out to a smaller <laughs> bottle. Use that. Have your tips, apply a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Last thing, and this is something I noticed the other day. Ben, you've got the other bit behind you. You're doing something smaller, more delicate, model making type stuff, or you want a little bit of glue in Pacific places. Point there, uh, something along that line, which is this is syringe tips. We can get syringes. 
there's different sizes. So these are West System ones. This is almost getting a bit like the Veritas Chair Doctor Glue. You can inject your own glue or you can put it exactly where you want. So you can put a little bit of glue in the syringe. It won't go up because it will, you can cool the cap. You've got that. Right. So, but you can apply a little bit of glue. You can obviously even suck your glue up depending on the consistency of it. I'm, I'm sticking my neck out now, aren't I, on the PVA, but it depends how thick it is. But you can suck it up or put it in the back, but you can apply a little bit where exactly where you want. I love that idea. And I didn't know you could get, I knew we'd get a syringe, didn't go get the little nozzle tips until I looked yesterday and went, oh, wow. Now, for some of my boxes, that'd be fantastic. But if I can put the glue on exactly down the middle of where I want that joint, I haven't got to spread it about too much. I haven't got to play around with it. I haven't got to make a glue spreader out of a piece of dowel or something. So, just going to put them back in before I kick them all over the bench. <laughs> Down, I don't know where they go everywhere. Okay, so there's nine little tips in there, different sizes. You could use them exactly the same as the chair doctor type stuff and inject it if you need. But their glue, I will say, is a bit thinner. All right, but lots of different things there we could get away with using. Most of us, we kind of reach for the glue bottle and just go, that'll do. I'll make some glue. So with PVA, most important thing about with the PVA. Give it a shake. Got to give it a shake and never do it. I mean, I think of when we did the window check, we, we never shook the bottle. Really need to shake it. Make sure it doesn't freeze in winter. Got to make sure you got to put it somewhere. Make sure you don't cook it in the summer. So put it somewhere it's going to stay nice, sensible temperature. Super glue, similar sort of thing. Put it in the fridge if you can. It will keep longer. All right. Most of the glues, not too bad. They're different glues that will do different tasks. We've already said, you know, things like pens or lamination or water resistant all play a part in what you want to do with it. It's a sticky subject, this. <laughs> Very good. Right, then, I think. Very good. You've got anything else, mate? Any other questions? No, I'm just saying, um, I'm not really bored. I'm just checking my questions down on here. <laughs> you know, we love a bit oh. of gluing up in here. Um, if you can find them... Um, Ah, so Fuller's again. He's got some some really nice, um, really nice tips here, and some good products to to check out online. Um, yeah, no, no more questions. Just okay. um, some really nice and helpful um, discussion points, and and uh, yeah. So where we started, my bit of brick. Okay, good. Polyurethane. Oh, sorry, stuff you move. Oh, there's our phone. That one's not fair, man. Okay. Oh, I've got, I'm, I'm trying, right, it's heavy, right, I can scrape that glue off now, so this is already gone off in an hour, back together, I can clean the glue off here, now the reason for not gluing the glue off earlier, it's a bit, a bit sticky, it'll go everywhere, it's better to clean it off when it's dry, but that's glued brick and cement, pulling your fan, it's, it's fantastic, it can be messy, but one of those really good things that most of us don't try, a little bit goes a long way. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, what am I doing tomorrow? Lighthouse tomorrow. Something lighthouse sensible tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing a lighthouse tomorrow. So we will see you again tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like us. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs>